It's the biggest question of them all. Where did we come from? How did we rise above our humble beginnings? How did a remote group of primates go from swinging from trees to walking on the moon? We now have a chance to peer back and see for ourselves. This is the story of how the world became modern. That was a clip from National Geographic's new docuseries, Origins, The Journey of Humankind. It offers a twist on conventional historical documentaries as, as it explores the question of how humans got from there to here and the evolution from apes to astronauts. Each episode takes a deeper look into how modern advances such as fire, medicine, and war altered the path of humanity moving forward. Kennedy sat down with Jason Silva, the host of Origins on National Geographic. What a fascinating area of exploration. Yeah, it's fun. Because uh, as a futurist, I know that you are deeply interested in the technological yeah. singularity yes. where human beings meld with machines. Sure, yeah. But it is most interesting and informative to go back to what you say are a number of other singularities. Yeah. Like the, uh, the existence of fire and how that changed us. Yeah, wow. Thank you for looking so deeply into the show. I, I really feel that Origins picks up on that Marshall McLuhan, the philosopher, his yeah. quote, first we build the tools and then the tools build us. Yeah. So all these artifacts, all these technological origin moments transformed us. They, yeah. were, they were singularities. One of them, and, and we explored, is the, the domestication of fire. Yeah. It takes a lot of inspiration from that book called Cooking Made Us Human. Mm -hmm. You know, Kevin Kelly from Wired Magazine has said this, that when we started cooking food for the first time, that was like an external stomach, an artificial organ yeah. that pre-digested every meal. And, and the amount of energy that it saved. Precisely. Which also added to yeah. our encephalization. So our brains were Grew. able to get bigger. Yes, yes and, and we were able to evolve yes. faster. Yes, 100%. Not only that, before cooking food, we had to spend all of our free time chewing. Yeah. Not a lot of time for anything else. Once you cook food, it's more energy available, right? Yeah. It's, more, it's, it's more efficient. So you eat, you stay full for longer, and all of a sudden and there's then you leisure can time. Things Culture, like creativity. Spears and, and wheels. You got it. You like got that. it. So we had this like, weird symbiotic relationship with technology. Right? Yeah. We started using stone tools. Our jaws shrank after a couple generations. Yeah, that's so right. we build the tools, the tools build us. Another episode looks at communications. You know, we take it for granted today that we live in the world of the internet instantaneously share our thoughts across time and space mm -hmm. in a form of technologically mediated telepathy, which is pretty yeah. much what smartphones permit us to do. But the first singularity was the origin of language. Mm -hmm. I mean, even spoken word or writing. When okay, I, let me ask you this, yeah, though, sure. because this is something, I wouldn't say it troubles me, yeah. but I spent a lot of time in evolutionary biology trying to figure out, okay, if we were able to develop uh, processes and structures that allow us to communicate through language, yeah. which certain philosophers would argue is the basis of consciousness. Sure, yes. Why haven't other primates been able to do the same thing? Well, that is, that is the mystery of mysteries. Kevin Kelly, in his book, What Technology Wants, who said that language was the first singularity, yeah. agrees with what you say. Language is like a magic mirror that reveals to the mind what the mind thinks. Yeah. In other words, what we know of as self-awareness is not possible without the structures of language. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a wetware upgrade. And if we were to draw a line in the sand, early hominids pre-language and hominids on the other side of that line, that world would be as inconceivable you know, to those early hominids as trying to explain the nuances of Shakespeare but why, to a chimp. Why do, I know, but why don't other great Why apes, haven't they? Yeah, why don't they have singularities? Well, there's, what there, is it about, there's some about humanity theories. that makes us special? <laughs> So that uh, will lead me to my last question about the technological singularity. Yeah, so Terence McKenna, mm -hmm. the psychedelic philosopher, has a theory that's a bit out there, but I find it quite compelling. It's called the stoned ape hypothesis, yeah. where he says that early hominids inadvertently ate psychedelic mushrooms, and because of their synesthetic effects, mm -hmm. right, that they, that they make certain senses like hearing sights or seeing sounds, yeah. that that was perhaps the catalyst that ended up hurled us into language yeah. because language is synesthetic. I take yeah. visual information and code it into vocal patterns, the mm -hmm. first wireless technology, sending my thoughts so that you can decode them. Yeah. That is a singularity. So that's one theory. Okay. You know, it hasn't well, been vetted I actually, by others. I mean, but, reading more about psychedelics, I, yeah. I think that that will become a more acceptable 
thesis in the coming decades. Very for sure. much so. Okay, my last question. I know that, that you are interested in the technological singularity. Yes. So if uh, we become less biological uh -huh. and, and more technology, if we become yeah. more machine than human, yeah. will we continue to evolve? Well, I think that the speed at which we evolve will evolve. Yeah. Um, there's a school of thought, these cognitive philosophers called David Chalmers and Andy Clark. Yeah. They wrote this famous paper called The Extended Mind Thesis, mm -hmm. where they say that we need a, a change in how we think about technology, get over what they call our skin bag bias, yes. which is this assumption that we end at the edge of our skin tissue. Mm -hmm. They say that mind as we know it today, intelligence, actually exists in the feedback loops between brains, tools, and environments. We okay. do part of our thinking on the page when we write Will stuff down. Will it still down. be considered evolution, yes, though, if there's yes. not a biological process that's accompanying it? I think so. Yeah. I think, as Kevin Kelly has talked about, that technological evolution is just the next phase. That yeah. the te technology, he calls it the technium, the seventh kingdom of life. All of it is made of atoms. All See, of I think we should embrace it. I know there are people who are terrified yeah. of it, from Stephen Hawking to Elon Musk. I think we should totally embrace it. I'm in your Me camp. Too. Yeah. Jason Silva, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.